So most of the time what we're doing is we're trying to avoid the truth of our underlying emotional condition and many of us are not understanding yet what effect that actually does have on our soul because it has a big effect on our soul and our soul's ability to experience emotions. So what I'd like to do firstly is just remind you of a few things regarding emotions. Let's just focus firstly on the issue of emotions. So here's our soul. So our soul is what things again? So it is our emotions, passions, desires, intentions and so forth, right? So there's our soul. What are the two influences on our soul primarily? All right, truth and error, okay. The problem with error when it enters our soul is that it feels like the truth, right? So once it's in my soul, it feels like it's true even though it's error. So that's one of the major problems that we have with regard to our emotions. So when we experience an emotion, we have the fear, many of our emotions are error-based emotions and where have they come from? They've come from our environment somewhere, haven't they? So let's, environment, we're right up there. So, and our environment obviously is primarily our upbringing and therefore a lot to do with our parents or the caretakers of us while we're growing up as children. So that is the primary generator of all of this stuff that's inside of us that's now entered us emotionally. By the way, there are also things that have entered our soul that come through the truth channel, of course, that are a part of the truth regarding our soul and how we feel. And of course, those things don't feel painful within our soul. They actually feel pleasurable within our soul. But most of the time in our life, we've got a soul that's quite full of quite a lot of error-based emotions which generate, it generates the pain in our life. And the pain is telling us that we're in emotional error. So that's the basis of our emotional processing. But what I'd like to do now is just describe to you what actually physically happens inside of your soul with regard to these. So if you can imagine your soul like a great big ball of emotional energy for a moment. When a causal emotion hits you, and what I'll do is I'll use a few examples. So let's say you were young, you were maybe five years of age, and you, know, you started experimenting sexually with maybe you know, <coughs> next door neighbor's five-year-old child, and you were five years of age yourself, right? And the actual experimentation process had no emotional co connection with it in that particular moment. In other words, you, feel, you felt quite okay that it was happening. You didn't feel like a shame that it was happening or anything like that until somebody comes along and projects at you their shame. So now a causal emotion has entered you of sexual shame. So there it is somewhere in your soul. that I should be ashamed of myself sexually and it's right there in my soul. Then what starts to happen is we start getting a lot of blocking emotions. So this is what I would call is my causal emotion. That's the one that generates the rest of my life while it stays in my soul. So that's the one that influences now every sexual interaction that I have with anybody from that point on. Does that make sense? that causal emotion. That's what generates my law of attraction. So my law of attraction is actually surrounding that emotion. If I want to change my law of attraction with regard to things, then I need to change this emotion. That's the issue I've got within my own soul. But what happens is we often have these little blocking emotions that we use to suppress our awareness of this causal emotion. Now let's look at what might happen. Let's say the next door neighbour's mum and my mum, they got together and they decided this was not on. And they decided they were really angry and upset because of all their sexual shame issues and so forth. And so what they did is they got me and the little girl together and they just yelled at us, what are you doing, this is not right, and off they go. So now there's some things of like an angry, an angry adult who's three times my size, right, is now projecting all this rage at me 
right, because of what I did. So how ashamed am I feeling now? Right, quite ashamed. But on top of that, now I have this thing that the adult is right. right? Or if we change the word adult to be mum, right? And you could say now that's a block for me to for experiencing my shame. Can you see that? So not only now do I have this shame inside of me, but now I have this belief that, that my mum, through her anger and rage and everything, has projected at me, and that's now also entered me, that my mother is right on this subject that I should be ashamed of that particular event. Right? And then, like, that night, Dad comes home. Right? Mum tells Dad, because Mum's still upset, right? She's not dealt with her sexual shame on the issue. Right? So she tells Dad. And then she tells Dad something like, and this happened for many of us in our childhood, you know, um, you need to belt them. You need to give them some kind of corporal punishment, right? So Dad comes along. What does Dad do? Dad gives us a smack, right? Because he's hooked into Mum and her, all of her feelings of what a man should do and so forth. And he's hooked into the fact that the man should just throw some strength and whatever else. And so Dad gives us a smack. Right? Here we now have another blocking thing placed on top of this of, of pain, physical pain. And we're terrified because there's a, like, there's a person three times bigger than ourselves now belting us and what are we feeling like this is totally we have no control over what's happening now we've got no like free will we're not allowed to do anything we're going to get punished we're going to get lots of pain and notice the pain is now associated with the sexual shame right just like mum in our age is being associated with the sexual shame can you see what's happening we're now constructing this big labyrinth of blocking emotions to actually experiencing the sexual shame. And this could go on for quite some time. Every time I see the girl next door, her mother might look at me with anger and pull her into the house. What just happened again is another experience. I'm going to be like ostracised or criticised because of my past behaviour. If I like, but that just adds to my shame, of course, but now I've got another emotion sitting there. And can you see how here's our soul, here's all the emotions in our soul, and we've got this now labyrinth of, a, of capping or blocking emotions coming all from my childhood, so I'd call all those emotions my blocks, to experiencing that feeling, that sexual shame. All right. So everyone's following so far, where we're at? Now, we're still young, we're still a child, and we could actually experience this sexual shame and release it, quite easily actually, if our parents allowed that to occur. And in fact, if, if you think about it, if our parents would allow that to occur, then they probably would be in a place where they didn't have any sexual shame themselves, and therefore the emotion probably would never have got created in the first place in us, right? So a lot of these emotions all came from the fact that our environment hasn't healed its emotion about those events. Now imagine if what you did was actually wrong from everyone's perspective, so, or even wrong from your own perspective. So sometimes we finish up taking actions that we know are actually wrong and we don't even know why we've done them, but we know that they harm others and so forth. So imagine if this sexual shame that we had experienced also involved the fact that the little girl next door got really badly punished, much more worse than what I did. Imagine if that happened. Now there's so much like, I caused her pain. There's a whole group of emotions surrounding that. You can see how you could easily have 40 or 50 different emotions now surrounding this underlying emotion, which is the cause of your law of attraction. Now obviously we want to get to this emotion and release it as an adult. We want to make sure it's not there anymore. But how do we do that? You, can you see there's, there's all of these patterns all coming off, if you like, of all of these blocking chains, if you like, coming off of this emotion that have been defined through the rest of my life and all of my life's experiences. 
And this is where truth comes in. You see, if we add now to the process, not personal truth, but rather God's truth I'm talking about here, so... Truth is the thing that is going to help us access each one of those states emotionally. 